JWST will look for signs of life on exoplanets using spectroscopy, the breaking up of the light it receives into its component wavelengths, like splitting visible light into the rainbow with a prism, but for infrared light in this case. But how does splitting up light tell us anything at all about life on these exoplanets, or even tell us anything about the elements on the planets either? Well, using these cool glasses, I'll show you exactly how it works. JWST isn't able to take direct images of exoplanets, but it is able to study the composition of their atmospheres. It does this using spectroscopy, which takes in the light from the exoplanet, breaks it down into its wavelengths, and analyzes it by effectively counting how much of each wavelength it sees. Seeing how much of each wavelength is received can tell us about the different elements and molecules in the atmosphere of each planet. To see how this is actually possible, we can use these glasses, whose lenses are actually diffraction gratings, meaning they can split up the light we see into its component wavelengths, just like the spectrographs on board JWST. The only difference is that we're doing it for visible light that we can see, while Webb does it for the longer wavelengths of infrared light. But the idea and intuition I hope you can get here are exactly the same. Let's start by putting these glasses over the camera and taking a closer look at one of these fairy lights I have in the background, which are fairly close to white light. You can see we get a bunch of repeating images of the little bulb all around it, but the further away from the center we go, the more spread out the light is. That means the more the different wavelengths separate. In visible light, we see this as a rainbow because different wavelengths correspond to different colors of light. The further we are from the original bulb, the more spread out it becomes here. White light is the combination of all wavelengths. So the further away we go, we lose the white light and we get more and more spread out rainbows. It's a full rainbow only because we're looking at white light. If you're looking at light being emitted from certain elements though, things are a little more interesting. This is a gas lamp. The glass tube here is full of a low pressure gas, in this case hydrogen, and when we turn it on, the electrical energy delivered to the gas causes it to glow. The point is, when chemical elements glow, they only give out very specific wavelengths of light. Looking through the diffraction glasses can show us exactly the wavelengths it emits. It shows us the emission spectrum of hydrogen. Close to the tube, it almost looks like a rainbow, but notice that there are a few lines in that rainbow that are much brighter than the other colors. As we move further away, the wavelengths get more and more spread out. We see most colors dim more and more, while the brightest lines stay. This same pattern is always given out by hydrogen. This means that if JWST or any other telescope with a spectrograph looks at an exoplanet and sees this pattern of wavelengths, then it knows hydrogen must be emitting that light, and hence there must be hydrogen in the atmosphere of that planet. No other element will emit the same pattern. What's really neat here is if I rotate the diffraction glasses but hold the camera still, we can watch the wavelengths recombine into the color we see the hydrogen glowing. Or alternatively, we can actually watch the pink glow break apart into its component wavelengths. Now I'll change the tube in the lamp to one that's full of helium instead of hydrogen, and we can see the different emission spectrum of helium. This one has a few more bright lines of color, but it's still a unique pattern for helium. We have a bright reddy pinky line, a bright yellowy line, and a bunch of greeny bluey lines packed in here. Again, if we rotate the diffraction glasses, we can watch these combine into the yellow glow of the helium lamp. And actually, as I rotate it, it can even be easier to see the exact wavelengths that it broke down into, especially when they're super close together here. The third gas tube I have here is neon, and when we look through the diffraction glasses, we see a whole load of lines near the red end of the spectrum. And it's a bit of a busier spectrum than the other two. In general, the heavier the chemical element we're looking at, the more emission lines we'll see. This is the emission spectrum we'll always see for neon. And again, we can rotate to see the red color of the lamp decompose into the spectral lines and also see those lines a little bit easier. Okay, so now we know how to tell what kinds of elements are emitting the light we receive. But how does this actually tell us anything about whether a planet can support life? Well, when we look at the light coming from exoplanets, we can break it down into these wavelengths, and the patterns we'll see will tell us what elements and molecules make up the atmosphere. This is because, as we've seen, each pattern will correspond to a unique element or molecule. In particular, JWST will look for specific molecules called biomarkers in these atmospheres. These are molecules that are really hard to produce naturally, but life makes them abundantly. For example, chemicals that little microbes give out when they eat other molecules. 
Examples of these biomarkers include phosphine, ozone, and chloromethane. Seeing these on a planet wouldn't confirm that there's life on that planet, but it would give us the best clue we can find at the moment for extraterrestrial life, and it can give us the best places to keep looking in the future. Of course, one complication is that atmospheres are never just emitting one element or molecule, so it's not as simple as looking at our lamps. Instead, we actually receive a complicated mix of all of the patterns from the planet, and we need to untangle them into the basic elements and molecules. This can be difficult, but it's very doable. The only other small difference is the way that Webb actually looks at the atmosphere isn't from the light they admit, but actually from the light they absorb. Don't be mad, it might sound like everything I've said so far is irrelevant, but it's really not. Webb looks at the host star's light and takes a spectrum of that. Then when the exoplanet passes in front of the star, the planet and its atmosphere block some of the light we get from that star, changing the light we receive. But just as elements emit certain patterns of light, they also absorb the exact same patterns too. And so we see a sort of negative spectrum. The wavelengths absorbed by the atmosphere tell us the composition of it. It's just that instead of seeing bright patterns of light, we really see a whole rainbow with patterns blocked out. In reality, we see an absorption spectrum rather than an emission one. It's why on this spectrum we've seen from JWST, this axis is labelled light blocked and not light emitted. It's because Webb sees absorption spectra. If Webb were to achieve a strong detection of biomarkers, it would probably be one of the biggest discoveries in history, and it could lead to us being able to look up at specific stars in the night sky and saying there's life on a planet around that star. That is a future I personally cannot wait for, and I hope to share it with all of you too. Such a detection would change our understanding of the universe and our place in it, and it could tell us that our solar system is not so unique after all. So that's all there is to it. That's how Webb looks for life. Let me know in the comments below if this helped you understand it a bit better than before, but also let me know if you have any remaining questions about it too. Be sure to hit that subscribe button too before you go. It helps me out a load and make sure you won't miss upcoming videos. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.